Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel. Today, we make our or my Euro 2024 squad. Euro 2024 kicks off in the summer in Germany on June 14th for Luciano Spalletti's boys. And of course, Italy are the holders of the European title. So they go in with a, you know, a bit of reputation to uphold, but at the same time, our expectations are, are quite low this summer. Uh, especially if you watch the last couple of friendlies against Ecuador and Venezuela. Yeah, no, not great, but also some positive signs and also some signals of what Spalletti, what formation Spalletti wants to play, what players he will take. So we got some insight into that and it looks like it will be 3-4-2-1, which is what he played a lot the last two games, slash 3-5-2 maybe. But also we also saw um, the 4-3-3, which he played. And of course, Mancini played a lot. So we need to take that into account when making our team. And to make our team uh, visually, we will use the help of tmaker.com, great website. Uh, and someone has very kindly, Giorgio Ripamonti, not Pinamonti, Pinamonti is definitely not going to the Euros, uh, has put together all the nice images of the players that we can use. Um, and yeah, as I said, this is my list or our list because I also want to know your opinions, not Spalletti's list. We can talk about what, who Spalletti will take. But this is my 26-man squad for Italy. And uh, let's get started. Akaza, of course, uh, the, the bottom tier means at home or stay home. Um, so let's get started quickly. Cover off the goalkeepers. I think this is the easiest one. Gigio Donnarumma is now captain of the Italian national team. He has recovered his form at PSG. And even the last couple of games, he showed how good, well, the one game against Venezuela where he saved the penalty, made some good saves. Um, I still, you know, don't rate him too much with the ball at his feet, but he's the guy. He's the guy for Italy, and it is what it is. Well, the other goalkeepers, again, is it really that important uh, at the end of the day? Because Donnarumma is going to start, so really the important one is the second one. Here I'll put Provedel and Carnesecchi. But I think, and we saw uh, the fact that Vicario played against um, Venezuela, uh, or sorry, against Ecuador in the second game. I think that takes him to, and of course, I think he probably deserves as well his former Empoli, but now at Tottenham as well in a in a much more physical league as well, a bit more, um, you know, different experience to the Serie A boys. I think this will be the the trio. Karnesecki, unfortunately, for that reason, misses out. He's young. Maybe he could take Karnaseki for the experience, but I would keep Provedel in there. Um, but it doesn't really matter for that third one because, yeah, the, the, does the third keeper even get any minutes apart from, you know, some uh, charity minutes? I remember Mancini giving um, Sirigu some charity minutes in the, in the last Euros, uh, in the last game of the group stage, I believe it was. Anyway, let's move on to the defenders. And here we got to start making one point, especially if you're not an Inter fan watching this, you're going to think, oh, this guy is an Inter fan. He's being biased with an Interista. No, Spalletti himself said in the press conference yesterday or the day before that, you know, Inter, best team in Italy right now, the core of the team is going to be built with Inter players, especially coming from the back. Um, because that's just what it makes sense. Yes, probably Spalletti doesn't want to play three at the back formation, but because interplay three at the back, three five two, the defenders are used to that. The the style of play or the you know the 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 automatisms, uh, the positional um, memory, muscle memory, it just makes sense to continue with that. Um, you know, in the past when Juve were good, last decade or so, there was a heavy Juve imprint on the national team. In the 80s and 90s, when Milan were good, there was a heavy Milan. So it's, it's you know, when the best team in Italy, usually if they have a few Italian players, that's going to have a say into the, in the Azzurri. So there is going to be some inter bias in there. And today, fresh off his case, being his case, uh, Francesco Acerbi, because he's right there. I'm going to go in with him first because he missed, obviously, the last game, last two games, because he was told to go home after the racism um, allegations from Juan Jesus, which is today, as of today, he's been cleared off because there was not enough evidence. Yes, that probably has tarnished his reputation a bit in my eyes and maybe other 
Interisti's eyes because of you know what potentially he said, and also you know we saw him apologize for it. But at the end of the day, he has been cleared of it, and he is still you know with now Chiellini and Bonucci gone, he is that stalwart veteran leader at the back, uh, especially when playing a back three. He is the guy to play in the middle of that back three. Um, so I think he's pretty much a no-brainer. Next to him, of course, Bastoni, left centre back. Not much to say there. You know, best, maybe the best left centre back. If you're talking about just in the three in the world, especially in terms of ball playing ability, Bastoni obviously will go. And I'm expecting him to take a bit more of a leadership role as well moving forward now. And then when we think about, again, continuing in the back three, um, I would take Buongiorno, Torino. He's been one of the best defenders in Serie A this season. Um, the issue is now we're getting the first three of pick. They're all left-footed. You know, in, in world football, actually, it's funny. In world football, left-footed centre-backs are actually a bit more harder to find, a bit more rare. But for Italy, we're actually got an abundance of left-footed centre-backs or left centre-backs. Um, yeah, so Bajorno wasn't probably that good in the uh, in the last uh, in his last start, but again, you know the guys might have been jet lagged, traveling all the way to Miami and stuff like that. So he goes in for me now. For the other centre backs, um, I think you also need some adaptability, um, someone that can play centre back and other positions, which leads me to Darmian. But first, I want to find other real you know proper center backs does does romagnoli make now romagnoli probably deserves to go in terms of his form of at lazio over the last few years he's become you know i think he's kind of fulfilling those kind of early uh early on in his career the re the high hype he was getting um coming through the ranks at milan he probably didn't live up to that but at lazio he's actually been good but again he's a left footed center back uh, how many of those do we need? Does Scalvini make it? This one is an interesting one. I don't want to know what you guys think on Scalvini because the hype on Scalvini is, you know, in Italian players in general don't get much hype, but for Scalvini, it's the, the spotlight is on this guy. You know, Italy are not creating centre-backs. We're not... You know, we're not that nation anymore creating, you know, proper old school centre backs anymore. So as soon as one half decent one comes out, we're all over it. And with Scalvini, he's good with Atalanta in the Atalanta system for Gasparini, high pressing, man to man. But is that the way Italy play? Is that the way international football is played? Probably not. International football is a bit slower, a bit more methodical. Um, the, the pressing is not usually as aggressive. Uh, and I've seen him, you know, struggle with Italy in general, not just the recent uh, outings in general. Um, he's not really convinced me too much, Scalvini, as a defender. I don't really know if he is really is a centre-back still. So for me, honestly, at the moment, I'm not really sure about Scalvini. So I'm going to put him at casa for now. I may revisit that one. For the other ones, um, yeah, so we need more right-footed centre-backs. Well, I'm struggling to see any in this list here. Um, so almost by default, almost by default, you kind of have to take Gianluca Mancini, who has had, you know, as much as I hate to admit it, because I just, he irks me as a... Well, I don't know him personally, but the, what, what I see of him, he just irks me, he annoys me as a player, as a person. But he is actually a right for the centre-back, good on the ball, can play in the middle and on the right side. Uh, and he's got a bit of a goal threat too. So we might have to just take Mancini for that. And then Matteo Darmian. I will take him. And then Di Lorenzo. And then this, this is probably the controversial one. Di Lorenzo is Spalletti's boy. That's his guy. He made him captain at Napoli. He was amazing for Spalletti at Napoli. But his form has completely fallen off a cliff with Giovanni Lorenzo. He was awful in the last uh, in the, in these friendlies. He's been awful for Napoli all season. Um, so for now, I'm going to put him at casa. But I don't know. Again, I may revisit this one. 
I think in terms of form, and again, I'm not being into bias, just on form and consistency of the last year or so, uh, and his adaptability, Darmian, he can play even on the left centre-back if, you know, really need him, if there was an emergency, and obviously in the wing-backs as he does at Inter. Um, so Matty Darms, I put him there. Now we need some wing-backs. Now we need some wing-backs. I think, again, form, adaptability, Cambiazo can play right wing-back, left wing-back, right back, left back. Can even tuck it into midfield for that reason to me he is pretty much certain um who else do we have we have obviously uh where's di marco di marco is obviously another certainty he's been amazing for inter uh two seasons now um and again he can also tuck into left center back if needed and then Udoji, so with two, we've got the two left back, left wing backs sorted with Di Marco and Udoji, uh, and then Cambiazo can do both. So we've got quite a good number here, maybe too many defenders. I might need to take a defender out afterwards. So we've got eight defenders, three goalkeepers. Uh, so that's we're on eleven players now. So let's move into yeah, and you can see you know centre back wise we're not particularly blessed, but let's move into midfield and then we can you know see how things go because I I do want to revisit Bellanova um, and a few other guys for the defence as well. Now midfield again, let's go straight for the guys we know. There's nothing to discuss. Yes, Barella's not been that good this season, as good, but we saw with Italy, it's still Italy's best midfielder. Um, yeah, there's no doubts about that. Even though was captain at the at the weekend. Easy one there. Bonaventura, um, I wasn't, you know, he's been in good form for Fiorentina, but I'm more than not been really convinced by him. Um, and then Cristante, no, Colpani, no, Colpani, no. Um, Cristante, uh, um, let's see, let's see in terms of uh, profiles. Fabiani's been doing well, deserves a little shout, but not there yet. Pratesi, it seems like. Spalletti likes him, and you know he has quite a unique profile in this team in terms of his uh, uh, running power from midfield and that ability to get into the box. Um, I would say only really Cristante and Barella are the ones that can offer that. Oh, actually Pellegrini as well, but Fratesi does it in a, in a bit of a different way, as Spalletti himself has said. I don't know if he's a certain though. That's the thing. I'll put him here straight after Barella, but I don't think he's a certain. But it seems like Spalletti likes him, and I like him although he's still not great on the ball as he should be the other one i think locatelli for me yes as a regista uh, under spalletti I, I, so I see him improved compared to him under allegri much better and again i would still like to see him maybe play in the mezzala role as he did at the euros at the last euros um but i'm happy with him as a regista too and i think Jorginho is kind of um secured himself a role especially this this friendly as you saw even when he came on as a substitute he's still you know important figure at arsenal no he's not he's not a starter but he's still you know when party was injured for arsenal um he's been important for arsenal you know premier league champions league experience yes he was the reason with his penalties while we didn't make it to the world cup but still an important player to have in that team an experience a level head to have uh, other guys in midfield, where's Pellegrini? Pellegrini is another definite must, a must. His goal threat, especially since Mourinho left, the Rossi's unlocked his goal scoring form, even for Italy now. Um, you know, he's so versatile as well. He can play deeper, a bit higher up, even on the wing sometimes. Uh, set piece taker, long shots. Lolo Pellegrini is there for me, 100%. And then. You know, Nemis Pessina, you know, captain of Monza, you know, deserves a shout. He was a part of the squad of the Euros. Um, maybe I'll revisit that. But I think for center mids, that's for now. I'm happy with that, and I'll revisit in terms of uh, number. Obviously, I don't think five midfielders are going to be enough. Center mids probably need six, but let's revisit that. So where we're at now, so we got... Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Um, 
So we've got another 10 players to play with, which is uh, which is pretty good. So let's go with the strikers now. This is probably the hardest one because you, you could literally put Balotelli in there. <laughs> oh my god, guys. This is that's how that's how down bad we are that we you can put Balotelli in there and you can make an argument for Balotelli in there. That's how down bad we are. But let's be serious. Uh, maybe it's a wild card, you never know. You never know. Um, is there even any uncertain? I was thinking, you know, who's certainly there? I mean, Retegi is definitely now, um, in terms of his general form, outside of his injury and what he did recently, and his, his record with Italy is actually pretty good. Um, and he is, you know, a true fox in the box, which I think you need at international level. Uh, you don't get too many chances. You definitely need that type of profile. And he's actually improved his back to goal and link up play a lot as well, which I've been impressed with. So he's going. And then I know <laughs> Spalletti seems to love Zaniolo, just like Mancini did. Mancini always called up Zaniolo, whether he was playing well or not, or even playing, which is not even now for Aston Villa, but Spalletti still calls him and even started him. I don't know yet about him. To me, I know he's not been in amazing form, Skamaka, this season. Uh, he's definitely not lived up to the price tag or the hype. Uh, or some people never believe the hype. I've always not been like super hyped about him, but I've always liked him. Even you know, I think he should be the future of Italy, but he's just not there at the moment. But this season, he's got nine goals and three assists. You know, twelve GA in one thousand three hundred minutes is not too bad um, for a, what's supposed to be a flop. And I think for his profile, aerial threat, you know, he's he's got the ability to score out of nothing. I would take Kamaka still. And then his Sassuolo boy, Raspadori, especially if we're looking to play a 3 5 2, you know, two striker formation or 3 4 2 1. He wasn't great in the friendlies either, and he's not been great for Napoli, but who's been good for Napoli? Um, I would take Jack Raspadori um, for his versatility. Um, and then. <laughs> Now this is where it gets difficult. This is, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in the striker category. Um, Fede Chiesa, I think he's he's one of those that is a certain, even though his form has been not that great and his injury issues have continued. Uh, let's have a quick look at his stats this season, and of course you have to take into account the uh, Allegri tax uh, in terms of his attacking output. So let's have a look. Seven goals, two assists. Not too bad, actually. Not too bad. Um, he started off the season well, then he's just kind of, yeah, recently, last few months, been quiet. Seven goals, two assists. Not too bad. 1,600 minutes. Uh, just 300 more minutes than Skamaka. But, you know, his threat, what he did at the last Euros, he's still that X-factor player, potentially, for Italy. We, we don't have a Rashford. We don't have a... Phil Foden, we don't have a Jude Bellingham, we don't have, you know, that player, that X Factor player that can, you know, take on a player, beat some players, or create something out of nothing. Unfortunately, Kiers is the only that is the real that guy that does that. I know and probably Spalletti sees Zaniolo as that guy too. But again, form wise, I don't know. I don't know if it warrants him being called up. I definitely, you know, Insigne now that he's in Toronto, he's that that ship has sailed. Bernardeschi, please know that was Mancini's boy. Um, and then, so we've got two proper strikers, one that's kind of you know half and half with Raspadori, and one proper winger. Uh, and if we're playing a three-four-two-one, then we probably need another winger. I would say, right, a winger slash striker. You know, last if it was last year, Zakani for me would have been straight in there. Now I'm not too sure. Um, Orsolini, of course, his Bologna form deserves deserves notice. Uh, I'm trying to find him. Oh yeah, there he is, Orsolini. What's Orsolini stats? Of course, uh, Bologna high flying. This is the problem with Italy squad. It's just like, you know, you got so much mid. Whoa, whoa yeah, Orsolini. I mean, I know he takes penalties as well, Orsolini, so we got to take into that into account. 
nine goals, two assists in 1,500 minutes, which is not too shabby. Um, you know, slightly better than Chiesa, but again, you got to take into account he takes penalties. Do we take Orsolini? Do we take Orso? I don't know, man. I don't know. Hmm. This gets tricky. All right, let's 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 count up the players. So we've got three, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So we've got six more players to add into this team. Which I think is it twenty six like well, actually, let me clarify because twenty six now seems a lot. Um is it twenty three man squad for Euros or is it twenty six? I think it depends. I think it's like, oh, I think it's, I remember, it's 26 initially for like the pre, like the, I think pre tournament, and then you get rid of, I think you get rid of three. I think they become like kind of emergency guys, uh, backup guys that, you know, in case someone gets injured, I believe. So we might actually, actually, we need to make a 23 man score. So if we've got three players to add into this. Which now makes it good. So I think we definitely need one more midfielder in here. And then we maybe maybe need a proper right back here, another right back. Because Darmian is kind of the, the jolly of like, you know, he can play multiple positions, but you probably need outside of Cambiazo, we need a proper right back. And you know what? You know what? I think for his characteristics, again, profile-wise, we might have to take Belanova. And I think Spalletti likes him. He started in the last game. And I think he did well. And he's been doing well for Torino. Juric, I've always said, if you guys follow me on this channel, I think Inter should have bought Belanova and loaned him to Torino so that Juric could have developed him. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And he's already now worth 20 million plus. He's still a bit of a headless chicken at times, but if you are playing a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3, yeah, I think Belanova, and especially with this Italy team in general, would lack a bit of athleticism and pace. Um, I'm taking Belanova. I'm taking him. So this is my uh, my back line, um, I think. How many guys we've got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I think that makes sense. You know, potentially you play five. At any point, and then you got four to back them up, or you got four with five to back them up. And then in midfield, I think we can take one more guy from midfield. Um, who do we take here? I think it's between Bonaventura. Bove deserves a shout. Bove, Eduardo Bove deserves a shout. Um, Colpani deserves a shout. Cristante definitely deserves a shout. Folaruncho, Fabian. Um, who else have we got? I don't even know who this is. Uh, Bafundi, Parisi, Pessina. So we got Pessina, Cristante. I mean, I would. Yeah, I would, I like. I would like want to take someone. You know. Uh, Mancini took because you it's really going to be these five really rotating it's going to be these five um but I remember Mancini took um Castrovilli to Euro 2020 and he uh I think he barely played he might have got like a few minutes here and there so that sixth midfielder is kind of more like yeah just like a wild card a young player that you want to bring on maybe to get that experience in a big tournament uh I think we've got enough experience in there yeah let's bring on Let's reward one of the youngsters. Let's reward one of the youngsters. And again, I might get told that I am um, got into bias here. I do have, I do like Fularuncho, what he's done for Hellas Rona. I just haven't watched enough of him to say, and we didn't see him for Italy either, so I can't speak too much on Fularuncho. Um, but I like that he's also adds a bit of different, a bit more athleticism, a bit of playing midfield. I don't know. Let's let's take Fabian. I'm gonna put in Fabian. Why not? Reward the kid for his good form with Bologna. But anyway, it could be Cristante. In reality, it probably would be Cristante. Uh, you know, that experience he can even play 
center back if it's an emergency deep lying oh, but i always think he's been misprofile cristante i think he's his best football is played when he's allowed to get into the box with late runs he's really he was really good at that at atalanta um, but then he gets quite similar to Rattesi in terms of that profile but so does fabian I think yeah, I think if, I think uh, Manch, um, Spalletti will probably take Cristante or someone one of the more experienced boys like Bonaventura. Um, but I'll put in Fabian. And now last one, last one for strikers. So here again, we need like a, a bit of a wild card, maybe. Al Sharawi has actually been in good form. You know, Al Sharawi deserves a shout. Al uh, Sharawi stats. He might not show in terms of goals, but he's actually, you know, pretty been a pretty good player for Roma. And he plays left wing back under Mourinho at times. Three goals, eight assists. That is not bad. 11 GA, you know, in line with what Chiesa and Orsolini and the others are doing. So he deserves a shout, Esharawi. But and Politano. Politano also deserves a shout, even though, you know, his uh, left foot is never too reliable. You never know where it, where it could end up. And if it was last year, Zakanyi would have been easy shout, but his form is also full enough for Cliff. I would have taken Moyes Keane if he kind of continued playing like he was at the beginning, even though he hasn't scored. <laughs> it's just weird to say, but uh, Moyes Keane with his adaptability and his physicality would have been nice. Do we take Chiro as that wild card last uh, striker, maybe? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. No, nah, I think Chiro. It's the, yeah, no, we got to say goodbye to Chiro. Damn, this is difficult, guys. This is so difficult. So not great content, but I need to... Well, I mean, you know, you talk about wildcard, Lorenzo Luca with his uh, heading ability is, what, six foot five, six foot six. This guy is massive. We just want to lump it up. But then we've already got Skamaka for that job. Arategi's not too shabby in the air either. Let's take... Yeah, I mean, if, if if Spalletti is trying to kind of go for the three four two one, ah, bloody hell! Then left footed, yeah, we do need a left footer as well. If you're gonna play three four two one, you need someone that drifts in from the right hand side. Zaniolo, I'm taking the L. It has to be because he's. Uh, I can see a little bit why because he's left footed in terms of up front. We don't have uh, any left footers, so just for that reason, if you're thinking of playing a 3-4-2-1 for angles it just makes sense so and then everyone else i mean i think at casa we can change this to just miss out because everyone else is at casa anyway underneath so i think yeah as i said scalvini i'm not too convinced by him maybe it's good to take him just for the like experience um and i think spalletti will take him and probably, you know, over Mancini or maybe Darmian, but this is my team. I'm not convinced by Scalvini yet as a defender. And Di Lorenzo, as I said, just because of form. Um, Bonaventura just misses out. Um, Calafiori misses out again. We've got uh, with left centre backs, we've just got too many. I think the, I, I prefer Bongiorno as a pure defender at the moment. Um, but I think Calafiori could have a better career. Um, yeah, Colpani just misses out. I think Di Gregorio just misses out. Cristante just misses out. Um, Emerson has been in good form for West Ham, must be said. But I think he just misses out. El Sharawi, um, yeah, who else just misses out? Meret, yeah, just misses out. Pessina, all of these guys, I think, just miss out. Romagnoli, Politano, Zaccagni. I wouldn't, yeah. If there's a wild card up front, I, I wouldn't mind picking, yeah, either Politano instead of Zaniolo. Um, Politano, he is a bit of a mean player, but he can always create something out of nothing. Spinazzola, I didn't speak about him, but Spinazzola is also, you know, a nice wild card to have on the wings, and he's been recovering his form for Roma. But yeah, that is my squad for Euro 2024. You guys let me know. What your thought is on this squad? I think it's strong enough to 
not win the Euros. I mean, I didn't predict Italy to win the Euros last time either, but I thought they would go, you know, deep into the tournament. I don't really know. I don't. I don't really think this Italy team can do can go really deep. But I have faith in Spalletti. I think you know Spalletti. I think we have the best coach of the tournament, which is something to be said. And I thought that even at Euro twenty twenty, I thought you know between. Mancini and Luis Enrique. I thought that was those were the two best coaches of the tournament. And I think in this one now, um, Spalletti, in my opinion, is the best. So I have faith in Spalletti. Um, I think up front, we just need to get our act together up front. If Rategi can sort himself out as he has been, and you know, Raspadori, Oscamaca, Chiesa can come up with the goods. Then, uh, then we could do something because at the back, even though we haven't name wise, the defense is not like looking amazing. But I can always trust the Italians to, you know, be resolute at the back as much as that is a stereotype. But yeah, that was a bit of a longer video, half an hour. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I want to know your team down below. Leave your 23 man squad down below. And uh, let's see how we do this summer. Forza Azzurri. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. See you in the summer for Europe 2024. Ciao.